Okay, I'm answering another question. This time it's from our Bible believer friend in India. He asked the question, and he's getting confronted with this by people. They say that uh, people are telling him that the rapture of the church takes place after the tribulation period, not before. And the reason is because 1 Corinthians 15 talks about us being raptured up at the last trump. And in the book of Revelation, there are seven trumpets that sound. And so what people are telling him is that since we're raptured up at the last trump, it must be the seventh trump of Revelation. And so that's at the end of the tribulation period. And it is true that the seventh trumpet is at the end of the tribulation period. But that's not what it's talking about. I'll read, I'll read the passage in 1 Corinthians 15 and explain what it means. And then we'll go to the passage in Revelation 11 where the last trumpet is sounded. And you'll see that they're different. Because the way you can see it, well, when I tell you what it means, even if you don't want to believe what I tell you what it means, you can still see just based upon the events that happen comparing the two. So in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Paul tells us today in the dispensation of grace, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, <coughs> but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is a reference to the rapture of the church. Uh, Paul tells in another epistle, he says that we are not subject to wrath. It means that we are raptured up pre-wrath, or we are raptured up before the tribulation period starts. And we also get that from rightly dividing the word of truth, knowing that the prophecy program for Israel is different from the mystery program, that what Paul preaches is something that was never revealed to man before that until given to Paul. He says in Ephesians 3, verse 3, if, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed. He says the same thing over in Romans chapter 16, 25 and 26. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest. And you can contrast that with what Peter says in Acts chapter 3. Verse 21, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. So Peter was preaching things that the prophets had spoken since the world began. Paul is preaching things that were a mystery, which had been kept secret since the world began. And so then when Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We know he's not referring to Israel's program and the things of that prophetic time. And part of prophecy, according to Daniel 9, is a seven-year tribulation period that Israel must go through before the second coming of Christ. So just by that, we know that what Paul is talking about and the trumpet is different from what John is talking about in the book of Revelation and the seven trumpets. John spoke prophecy and Paul spoke mystery. Revelation 1, 3, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So, that right there tells you they're different. And, but, of course, most people don't rightly divide the word of truth. They don't recognize the distinct ministry of Paul. So, let's look at the verses themselves. And let's assume you don't 
recognize the, minister, the distinct ministry of Paul. You're dealing with someone who doesn't rightly divide. We can still show from the scripture that the event of 1 Corinthians 15 is different from the seventh trumpet judgment in Revelation 11. Because all you have to do is look at the passage. Again, Paul says we're not appointed to wrath. You see from here that it says, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. If you look over in the parallel passage about the rapture of the church, 1 Thessalonians, in chapter 4, he says in verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So basically what it's saying is that the Lord comes. He doesn't come to the earth because we meet the Lord in the air. So he only comes into our atmosphere, comes into the air, and blows the trump, the trump of God, and then the dead in Christ rise. So that first trump is a trump that the dead in Christ can hear, and they rise from the ground and meet him in the air. And then he blows the trumpet a second time, and those who are alive and remain are caught up together with them in the clouds. So one trumpet blast for the dead in Christ, and then the second trumpet blast for those alive in Christ. And that's what Paul means when he talks about the last trump. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Okay, the people who don't sleep are the ones who are alive, not dead in Christ, but they are alive. So when do we when are we changed? Those who are not sleeping? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. The alive are changed at the last trump, which is the second trumpet sound when Jesus Christ comes back for the rapture of the church. The dead in Christ are changed at the first trump. The first trumpet sound when he comes with the trump of God, because they rise first. So that's what's meant by first and last trump. But again, if you don't want to rightly divide, we can still see that these are. this is a different event from the seventh trumpet by looking at the seventh trumpet judgment in Israel's program in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, okay, verse 15. Revelation 11, 15. And the seventh angel sounded. That's a reference to the seventh angel blowing the trumpet. And there are only seven trumpets blown. So this is the last trump for the prophecy program in terms of these judgments. This is what people say, and what my friend in India is saying that people are telling him that this is the reference to the last trump of 1 Corinthians 15, and that therefore we are not raptured up until post-tribulation, at the end of the tribulation period. The problem with that, though, is the events that are described that happen at the seventh trumpet judgment are different from the events that are described in 1 Corinthians 15 at the last trump. And the seventh angel sounded, and another question is, what about the dead in Christ? If the last, if the those who are alive in Christ are ascend to heaven at the seventh trumpet judgment, when do the dead in Christ ascend? Is it at the first trump, the second trump, the third trump, the fourth trump, the fifth trump, the sixth trump? See, there isn't a numbering system with 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4 because there are only two trumps. So he says the trump sounds, dead in Christ rise first. At the last trump, which would be the second trump, the, uh, those who are alive in Christ go up. If you don't take that interpretation, you say, well, the last trump refers to the seventh trumpet, then you got to say, well, when do the dead in Christ rise? Which trumpet do they rise in? Okay, let's say you say that they both rise at the seventh one. You still have a problem because the events are different. The events that we're told about for the rapture of the body of Christ is we are changed. Our vile flesh is discarded. We are given a glorified body 
and we are forever with the Lord in the air. But at the seventh trumpet judgment in Revelation 11, 15, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So you see from Revelation 11 that, I mean, it does mention that you've got reward to the servants, the prophets, and to the saints. But for the most part, what it's talking about, it says the king that when, when that seventh angel sounded, there are great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever. So it's a reference to the, not to us going into the air and forever being with the Lord, but it's a reference to the Lord coming down to earth and establishing his kingdom on earth. You know, it's from verse 18, the nations were angry, thy wrath is come. Well, when you have the rapture of the body of Christ, it doesn't really affect the nations. The nations continue on this earth and they end up being satanic nations. God's people are raptured up, taken away. And they hate us, they don't care about us anyway, so they don't, there's no sweat off their back that we're gone. When the two witnesses are killed halfway through the tribulation party, uh, uh, tri tribulation period, the world throws a party, gives gifts to each other. I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happens when the body of Christ is raptured up. There's a big party that we got rid of all those evil Christian people. Who knows, there probably aren't enough of us for them to notice anyway. But uh, regardless, you can see the, the reason we know, even if you don't rightly divide the word of truth, we know that these are two different events just because of the language around it. The Lord, for 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4, at the rapture, he comes to the air. He never sets foot on the ground here because our place is in heavenly places. So he just takes us off of the earth takes us up into heaven and we go and seat together with Christ in heavenly places for all eternity. But at the seventh trumpet judgment, that's regarding God reconciling the earth back to himself through the nation of Israel. And before God can bring Israel into the kingdom on earth, he has to bring judgment against the nations who are in rebellion against him so he can overthrow them basically and set up his kingdom on earth just like Daniel chapter 2 talks about that at the end of the tribulation period it says in Daniel 2 verse 44 and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed and the kingdom shall not be left to other people but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms and it shall stand forever God comes to earth at his second coming and destroys the Antichrist kingdom. Babylon has fallen, Revelation 17 and 18 tell you. And he sets up his kingdom on earth. So he's actually coming down to the earth. That's why in Zechariah, in Zechariah 14, it says in verse 3, Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. So when you read 1 Thessalonians 4 about the rapture of the church, it says, The Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout. The dead in Christ rise up. Then we which are alive and remain are caught up, and we rise up to meet the Lord in the air. The Lord never steps foot on the earth. He is in the air. So even if you don't rightly divide, 
you know from 1 Corinthians 15 and from 1 Thessalonians 4 that the church, the body of Christ, is raptured up to meet the Lord in the air. And we know from Revelation 11 and from the Zechariah 14 passage, and other passages, by the way, that when the seventh trumpet sounds in Israel's program, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. He is the stone not cut with hands that comes out of the mountain from Daniel 2. He destroys the Antichrist kingdom, and he sets up God's kingdom on earth. That's why his feet stand upon the Mount of Olives to go to battle against the Antichrist, the false prophet, and their forces. He destroys them, gets rid of the satanic rebellion, at least at that point. And then he sets up God's kingdom on earth in Jerusalem. And then he takes believing Israel and brings them into that kingdom. They, they Even though the dead uh, believe in Israel, they rise from the graves at that time. They never meet the Lord in the air because the Lord is on the earth. And he's setting up his kingdom on the earth. And so it says, Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let me read it to you so I don't misquote it. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He says at the very end in verse 6, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There is no mention of them being raptured up out of their graves in the air to be with the Lord. It's all about the Lord. They are raptured up out of the, I mean, they come out of their graves. They're, they're resurrected out of their graves. But the Lord, as the good shepherd, leads them out of those graves, takes them into his father's house, which is on earth, because God's kingdom is on earth at the time. So even if you don't rightly divide, you could simply read the events of 1 Corinthians 15 and 1 Thessalonians 4 and see that when the body of Christ is called out of the graves and those who are on the earth and they receive their glorified bodies we go up in the air meet the lord and we forever with the lord in the air whereas for israel's program when the seventh trumpet sounds it's the kingdoms of the earth become the kingdoms of the lord and he comes down to the earth his feet are on the mount of olives on the earth and believing Israel who is resurrected from their graves are then led by the Good Shepherd into the kingdom all on earth. Alright, hopefully that clears it up. Thanks for watching.